In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at some of the trim and editing tools within Resolve. And once you've learned and committed these to memory, they can help to speed up your editing process exponentially. To begin with, I just want to mention a few shortcuts that are incredibly useful for navigating within the timeline. And let's actually close our media pool and switch to the single viewer mode so we can just really focus on our timeline and timeline viewer. And I'm also going to make this a bit larger. Let's pull our clips up a little bit and I'm gonna hold shift and expand out or zoom in on our video track. The first shortcuts I want to mention are the up and down arrows on the QWERTY keyboard, and these allow us to navigate between the individual clips that we have in the timeline. So the down arrow is going to move us forward in the timeline and the up arrow will take us to the beginning or move forward. Tapping the left and right arrow keys will allow us to move frame by frame within the timeline here. Holding shift and using the left and right arrows will allow us to move through our timeline in seconds. And so we can just take a look at the time code here. So we have our seconds. So holding shift, left and right arrows, we move by seconds. If we're not holding shift and just using the arrows, we see we move frame by frame. If we press and hold the left and right arrow keys, we can scrub through our timeline in forward or reverse. Pressing the home key on our QWERTY keyboard will take us to the beginning of the timeline and pressing end will take us to the end of the timeline. And of course, we can always click in the ruler within the timeline to set our playhead position and navigate. We can also use the jog bar within the timeline viewer. And we have a jog control here that we can click, hold and drag to scrub through the timeline. Pressing V on the QWERTY keyboard, V as in Victor, will allow us to select the nearest edit point within our timeline so we can see the position of our playhead here. And as I press V, that's gonna jump to the nearest edit point. And if we press Shift and V, this will select the clip that currently intersects with our playhead. So I'll go ahead and position here, Shift and V, and we can see that that clip is selected. Positioning here, Shift and V, we then select that last clip. And with our last clip cl selected, I want to show that we can use the period and comma keys to nudge our clips frame by frame. And if we hold shift and use period and comma, we'll nudge the frame or nudge the clip five frames at a time. And finally, J, K, and L are important keys to know. L will play forward. K will stop and J will play in reverse. Now we can also, when we single tap, we play in real time. If I tap J again, we play through quicker. If I tap it again, then we move through, through even more quickly. I'll press K to stop and pressing L, we move through in real time. Pressing it again, we move through quickly, quickly and pressing it again, even quicker. So definitely some handy shortcut keys to know. These can really be helpful when you want to perform quick cuts within the timeline. Now I have not performed any edits or trimming on these clips and one guide that we do have to indicate this is when we come to the edge of a clip, our arrow changes into a single bracket. And if I click once, we can see that we have this vertical red line indicating that we are at the very beginning of this clip and there's no adjustments or trimming that has been done. Coming to the end, clicking once, we can see the same vertical red line. And if I click and hold, I'm not able to extend this out. Now with the single bracket, if I were to click, hold and drag to the left, notice that the vertical red line turns into a green one and we can see a white frame indicating the original length of the clip and we now have a blank area that I can actually click once on to select and you can see that that highlights in a light gray and I can press backspace to ripple delete that and it pulls that last clip forward. But let's go ahead and undo that with control Z because I wanna be sure that we're noticing in our timeline viewer up above that as we perform the trim, we can see a live preview of the exact frame our trim will end up at. 
But a simpler way to go about this sort of trim would be to activate the trim tool or the trim mode. We can activate that by clicking here or by pressing T. And then now, if I move towards the edge of this clip, we have the single bracket. And when I click, hold and drag to the left, we're going to ripple edit this and all of the following clips will be pull, pulled forward or pushed back as we perform this trim. And if you take notice up above, we have an additional viewer that pops up as I perform this trim so we can see the exact frame that the clip we're adjusting is going to end at. And then on the right, we can see the first frame of the next clip. Now, another way that we could perform this trim would be to position our playhead cursor on the particular frame where we would like to trim to, and then we can press shift and the right bracket. And that's going to, let's be sure that we are active in our timeline, shift and right bracket. Then that's gonna to trim to the frame that we have our playhead set to, and then pull all of the following clips forward. Let's go ahead and undo that. And we can perform the same action at the beginning of our clip, setting our playhead at the frame where we'd like to trim to, then hold shift, and, and this time we would choose the left bracket. Again, we perform the trim to where we position our playhead at the, that particular frame, and then ripple edit. You notice all of our clips are moved forward. Now let's come back to our second clip here and then click on the left edge. And we haven't performed a trim here, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And we can see the white frame of the original length of our clips. This always pops up whenever we're performing a trim. So we can see how much we're adjusting here. But we've got a trim on either end of this clip. And while we have a trim, in this instance on both ends, it could just be on one, we can actually come to the center and perform a slip. And so we're essentially changing the in and out points for this particular clip. And then if you notice in the viewer, in the top left-hand corner, we're gonna see an image of the first frame that our adjustment is moving to for this clip. The top right frame is gonna be where we're ending. The bottom left clip is going to show the last frame of our first clip. And the bottom right-hand image is going to show the first frame of our third clip. So we can go ahead and make these adjustments and have a live update to see exactly what we're performing here. Now, whether we have the selection mode active or the trim edit mode, we can come to an edit point here, say between these two clips, and we can actually perform a roll. So if I click, hold and drag here, now we're adjusting the end of our second clip and at the same time, adjusting the beginning of our third clip. Now another option that we have is slide. And if you notice our icon, our two brackets here with two arrows in the center, as I move this down to the bottom of the clip, notice that this changes, our brackets move to the inside and the arrows are on the outside. And in this way, we can slide this particular clip. So I'll click, hold and drag to the right. And this basically keeps the same length of our clip, but it changes its position within the timeline. And again, within our viewer up above, the top left image is going to show the beginning of the clip we're adjusting and the end, and these will remain the same because we're not altering the length of this clip. We're just changing its position in the timeline. And the bottom left is gonna show the last frame for our first clip and the first frame for our third clip. Now let's activate our selection mode again. And there may be an instance when you'd like to trim the video or audio portion of a clip independently. And the way that we could go about doing that, let's come to this first one here. We have several different methods that we can use. So while this clip is selected, I'm going to right click. And then at the bottom of our contextual menu, you can see that we have link clips. If I deselect that, let's click here and come back. I can now select these individually. So let's trim our audio and we can just pull that in independent of our video clip. Let's control Z to undo that. Click once to select our video, hold shift to select our audio. We can right click and then relink these. And then now these will again adjust 
as one unit. Another method that we can use is by locking a track, whether it's the video or the audio. So let's lock our audio, come to the video, and this is gonna lock the entire track. And while that's locked, I can come to the video portion here, click, hold, and drag, adjust that independently. Let's come to our second clip. I can adjust this independent of our audio. And so we can accomplish this by using the lock. But let's go ahead and undo those actions and unlock the track. And the final method for adjusting the audio and video independently would be coming to this link icon here. This will be active by default, but if we click once to deactivate, then all of the clips within our timeline will be available for independent adjustments like so. Let's undo and we'll go ahead and turn the link back on. And to finish things up, I just want to talk briefly about setting in and out points within the source viewer, because we can also determine what portion of our video files, audio files are going to be brought into our timeline by using in and out points within our source viewer. So let's go ahead and switch back to the dual viewer mode. And I'm going to open up the media pool by clicking in the top left corner here. Now, any item in the media pool that we'd like to work with in and out points on, we can just double click to be sure that that's active in the viewer. And we have a couple of buttons here that we can press to set in and out points. So if I press here, this is going to set an endpoint. I can then use the jog bar and move forward to find the particular frame I'd like to end at and then click here to set an out point. Now, if we move to another area and then play back, I can also use I to set the endpoint and O to set the out point. Let's go ahead and stop playback. And then now that we have these set, we can bring in just this particular portion of our clip into the timeline. So I'll drag over to our timeline viewer and I'm going to choose append to end. And we can see that that particular portion that we set up with in and out points is now imported to our timeline. Okay, so these are just a few of the tools and keys, shortcut keys that we have available for performing editing and trimming within Resolve. I hope this has been useful. I will see you in the next tutorial. Thanks for watching.